52 million years ago, our early mammal ancestors living on a hotter, drier planet developed something remarkable, the power of flight. This group of mammals, the bats, have since diversified across the globe into over 1,200 species. Here in southeast Queensland, they have evolved into a spectrum of sizes, shapes and colours, each suited perfectly to an important role in our ecosystem. From pest controllers to pollinators, they are vital pieces of a grand puzzle, but for some people they can be perceived very differently. In recent years, many bat species have declined and there is now evidence that this could have drastic consequences for us too. This is the story of the grey-headed flying fox. My name is Councillor Glenn Tozer from the city of Gold Coast. I look after the southwest corner of this beautiful city. Over the last hundred years or so, the Gold Coast has turned from a mix of fishing villages and farming villages, all kind of separated by vegetation and beautiful open space, uh, into this urban mass of about 600,000 people. What that's meant is that animals and flora and fauna that otherwise occupied broadly across the whole city area has been constrained to smaller pockets. And one of the animals affected by this is the grey-headed flying fox. Hi, I'm Dr Ali Samuel from Griffith University and today I'm here at a bat sanctuary on the Gold Coast where we rescue and rehab flying foxes. The grey-headed flying fox is really distinguishable from the other species of flying fox because they've got this lovely red mane around their neck that glows in the sun really and they've got this grey type of head. They're about 60 centimetres long and they are actually a mammal like you or I but they're the only flighted mammal so they use their hands like wings and they have very long fingers with a membrane between them and that's how they fly through the air. The wonderful thing about flying foxes is they actually look like little dogs. They're very, very cute. Flying foxes choose specific areas in which to live. They love to have a breeze, they love to have the water there, they like to be cool and they want to have lots and lots of foliage and lots of trees. Well, they're the type of places that humans want too. So the places that flying foxes move to, they're hot, there's not much breeze and what happens is, just like us, they're mammals, when they overheat they experience heat stress. Heat stress is a really big thing with climate change. We're going to see it more and more. And this is why the animals are actually classified as vulnerable. For example, in 2014, 45,000 bats died in the period of three days across Australia. The reason why flying foxes are so important is because of their long distance pollination. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Just say on the Gold Coast we have a community of trees, of native trees that really, really like it when it's, there's a lot of rain. And so the, they flower, they're really healthy. Whereas somewhere like Brisbane, just say there's a community that really does well when there's drought conditions. And so they flower and they're really healthy. Now a bee can only fly three kilometres. Whereas a flying fox, what it does, because it can fly 100 kilometres, it will actually swap the genetic material for both both areas and so the seeds that result from the fertilization will mean that the next offspring in both areas will do really well with drought and do really well when there's a lot of water around. This is really important for climate change because we know that the fresh water is going to fluctuate and so that's why scientists actually say that flying foxes are like the superheroes of climate change which actually works out well because they do come with their own superhero cape. As a local councillor, we get complaints from time to time from local residents whose homes are now quite close to the habitat of the grey-headed flying fox. And that's a real challenge because we know how important uh, the flying fox is to our local ecosystem. So when people do complain, one of the things they often ask us is to move the grey-headed flying fox on. And there's some real constraints around that. One of the primary things that I tell people they need to do is if they're living in the hinterland, they need to understand that the animals that are living in the hinterland have been doing that for a thousand years and if you've chosen to live in our beautiful vegetated areas in the west of the city one of the things you need to understand is you're gonna have to coexist with these animals it's actually really important that you remember that we need to make adjustments to how we live when we're living in a hinterland environment that has really important environmental variables that actually improve our quality of life 
The main thing is education. Because flying foxes are really misunderstood by society, they're actually vilified. People are afraid of them. There's only one disease that anybody can get from a flying fox, and that's the Australia bat lissa virus. And it's extraordinarily rare. In fact, the World Health Organization says it's one of the rarest diseases on the planet. There are actually vaccines for it. So if you get bitten or scratched by a bat, you turn up to your local hospital and you can get the free vaccines. Flying foxes are such amazing creatures. Without flying foxes, we wouldn't have all of the beautiful forests that we value. All of the plant life and all the animals that are associated with that ecosystem wouldn't be there. They play such an important role. So let's work together to make sure this beautiful relationship continues for many, many more years to come.